I'm back home in Los Angeles today and I'm not gonna lie, I am a little sad. This was my first RNC. And I just wanna say as someone who was like liberal her entire life, to be in a room with that many people of every age. I have so much to tell y'all. It is like two o'clock in the afternoon. My mouth is watering, my body gets cold and then hot and I do not have time for this. My stomach just keeps going blub, blub, blub. And all I can think of is I ate a honey bun and half a cosmic brownie, maybe 80% of a cosmic brownie, <laughs> like in the middle of the night. And maybe this was God saying like, that is enough sugar, woman. Cause I, my, my head feels mentally like I'm ready to go. I got a bunch of shit to do. Oh, I got to tell you all about all that too. Um, <laughs> thanks for the email this morning, sir. Um, <laughs> copy of our email exchange is attached i scroll down there's my mouth but um i was just saying like he's gonna need you soon and here we are anyways i'm getting sidetracked i feel like shit and i don't have time for that. remind me i made a video right there we'll post it a different day god my mouth is watering so bad my stomach feels like bloop bloop and my mouth is watering and then one minute I'm hot and the next minute I'm freezing cold. But like my, for my head, I feel like not sick. Like I have shit to do. Um, <laughs> Y'all know the look. You gotta wonder, like, what goes through his head sometimes? Like, did he really think this was a good idea? Remember when I said there's nothing that I've ever done that I wouldn't stand in front of my church and tell them I did? Because I know the worst that I've done. Now I don't have to worry about I'm awake. I'm alive, just covered in papers. Um, <laughs> I feel like now I'm getting to the point where I shouldn't say what I'm doing because then, I don't know, the QuickBooks lady said there's no getting out of it, so that's good. She was like, you need a forensic accountant, ma'am. Oh my, I, just, I said, can you just remember you said this one day? If you ever like hear about this story again, can you please just remember that was your first piece of advice to me? Um, and she said some other things that were way worse. And I feel like if I don't say those out real loud right now, then when he watches this story back or when she tells him everything I'm saying, that they can't, well, well, it doesn't matter. The QuickBooks lady says it's all there. Also, did you know we had two QuickBooks accounts? Crazy. I know. We did. We had two QuickBooks accounts. Um, but you can get every single profit and loss statement that's ever been with the red attorney. You can get every single profit and loss statement your system has ever printed out with a timestamp at the bottom. You just have to have an attorney. So, I'm about to sell every single thing I own. I'm going to make an appointment and go try to sell my bags at fashion file i guess i'll put a bunch of them on poshmark lower tonight and try to get rid of them yeah i will literally sell every single thing i own to fight back 100 percent. i have no fuck i don't care this is just things my name is my name my reputation my son googling me when he grows up like nah told you are you kidding me i wasn't recording any of that i was like why is it letting me talk so long anyways start over i'm selling that huge mirror I'm selling that, this one, oh, sorry. That one has LED, this one's already sold. This one has LED all around it. Oh my God, I'm horrible at this, this one. This one is the anthro one I just gave you all a whole spill on. But basically, the bottom of the mirror, not the mirror itself, but the frame is cracked. So it'd be a really good deal for somebody who wanted to like put it on like a rug. I thought about putting it in my bedroom, but it doesn't fit in like the corner of the wall. And then I did move it, move it over there. I moved the other one just to see what a mirror would look like there. But you can like see my whole house behind me and I don't like that so I would never take a picture over there I don't really have anywhere else for it to go so if you need a big mirror let me know maybe I'll put some stuff I'll put a question box every time I put something for sale because I, I miss y'all's messages a lot so anyways okay now I'm making food have a good day
but i will literally sell every single thing in my house like i'll sell my massage chair i'll sell my couches like i don't care what anything every single thing i own because like i said they're just things and i'll be damned if the cookbooks lady ain't gonna tell me i got a case <laughs> like oh god and what she said oh no okay so so i got less than a month to come up with the money for an attorney and i will and i mean i don't really need to put it together it's there but it's like i need a security guard because <laughs> you know like when it starts getting real serious like, what are they going to do? Also, who's going to flip on who first? I don't know. Anyways, doesn't matter. I don't care. So just left well enough alone, bro. This is what it boils down to, too. If somebody stole your money, would you press charges against them? Okay. I don't know why I always was, like, so worried about, like, telling my side of the story. I think I always thought, like, they could figure out a way to get out of it, but... How many people have to tell me that there's no way to do that before I believe it? Well, I'm here now. So, God, I can't believe I just ate that dog on my stomach. It's going to be tore up. Like, I can already feel it. Urgh. No honey buns tonight. So you would believe that they're going to keep getting away with it if they did. You know? And, like, at the end of the day, I already went to court. And I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to an attorney. Look, let me show you some of this video and you tell me. I'll just show you like the first two minutes. God. So inventory is, it's good for us to know our true inventory and all that stuff. But what I'm saying to the IRS, I mean, it's like a made up number to them. Do they come back? Okay, so remember when I told you that in my old job, I used to send my files to policy and then they would audit it and tell me what I did wrong. So if you get audited by the IRS, don't they come in and tell you what you're doing wrong so you can fix it? No. Oh. It's weird. Yeah. So, they do their stuff, and then they say, hey, we found all these places that um, we think you owe us money. And if they find stuff where you overpaid, they're not going to let you know that. They're only there to make more money. Oh. They want to find stuff that you did wrong that they can nail you on. But then do they tell you you did it wrong so you can fix it or no? Well, as long as you have to pay money. They're only there to make you pay money. Oh, so they don't tell you if you did something right, if you're doing it the right no, way. absolutely not. Oh, not. Oh, not at all. Because they don't want to give you more money. So if they see an error that you made by, uh, like, saying you, like, where they owe you more money, they don't fix that? Absolutely not. So that's why you're, okay, so that makes sense then. Because you were telling, okay, so is that why you said not to go get a accountant? Yeah, you can only lose. There is no winning in an uh, IRS audit. Not only that, they ask you stupid questions about all kinds of shit. It just wastes your time, and you have to answer them. So then what's the difference between getting an audit and getting a, like, getting an actual IRS audit and then going to get a forensic accountant or whatever? Well, the forensic accountant will, like, basically try to link up all transactions to everything. Okay. So, I mean, they aren't they the ones care telling about... you what you do right or wrong? So the IRS only sees like, hey, you start... what we have to do is look at when the, the bank was reconciled. Was there a value missing or not? That what does that mean? Right there. Reconciled. So if it says we spent $50,000 and we made $100,000 and the bank's reconciled, then it means that $50,000 disappeared somewhere. Uh... And that's what the CPA knows. Okay. So a CPA is different than a forensic accountant, which is different than an auditor? Yeah. I mean, a CPA could do forensic. No, it's probably some lower level than a CPA. Oh, the forensic accountant is? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not good. I don't want that. I'd rather have the person who's the smartest handle it. See, the thing is, like, Doug could see. He would be able to do a quick check to see if forensic accounting is even needed. Because after you reconcile it, everything washes out. Yeah, because it's so, it's so extremely detailed and time consuming to go down every single charge, and it's going to be time consuming for you because you got to explain every single charge and where it came from. Well, that, can you do it? 
You don't, you don't work. Yeah. Between. Yeah, I can do it. Cause literally, I mean, for us, all we have to do is look at when the, the bank was reconciled. Was there a value missing or not? That what does that mean? Right there. Reconciled. So if it says we spent $50,000 and we made. Have the person who's the smartest handle it. See, the thing is like Doug could see, he would be able to do a quick check to see if forensic accounting is even needed. Cause after you reconcile it, everything washes out. You have a hundred thousand dollars that came in and a hundred thousand dollars in expenses. At that point, if that's good, then you're to the point of, you just need to go down every single transaction and make sure somebody didn't buy something on a credit card or account that didn't make sense. Right. Cause you already had a hundred thousand dollars coming in and a hundred thousand going out. Mm -hmm. But then you just verify all the charges, the withdrawals, the, all that stuff. And then that's basically a forensic account. Oh, well, then why is there a difference? No, What's the difference between them? Like, why is there a reason not to hire the forensic one versus the other one? So if there was... Besides that, the forensic... A forensic accountant, probably, if, if there was somebody, if you did, like, a lot of cash stuff or something, and... And I know what you're thinking right now. Like, he's telling you, Baga, you're not an idiot, are you? That video was March 18th. My dad died May 5th. So my dad dies a month and a half after. If you were around then, and you probably were, you know... My dad was having seizures constantly. We were in and out of the hospital constantly. Like, I just wanted to believe my husband. That video goes on for 31 minutes. And in that video, um, if I could figure out how to post the whole thing at once, I would. I tell him, like, I just need you to tell me what to do. You're my husband. I trust you. I want to trust you. And he's like, I got it, babe. Don't worry. You can't be telling me that Mr. Doug looked at our finances and saw these two P&Ls with two different... $500,000 difference in inventory, and he didn't think we needed to dig around. Because then you would be saying that, the, that Doug's lying, and I don't think you'd want to do that, right? I also go on to tell him in the video that I would be more comfortable. Oh, number one, I file for divorce, like oh, a couple days later. Maybe the 23rd or 26th, I don't remember what day. Um, I paid off my line of credit and made sure I didn't have any bills due and that we were not in debt. And then, so when I'm saying I'm broke, I still have at least a hundred something thousand dollars in the bank to, but to me, broke is like, I should have millions of dollars. So where is all my money? Um, and not necessarily millions of dollars in my bank, but like over the course of the last several years, I've made at least like, say $500,000 in profit. So where is all of that money between like the fact that my business card paid for all kinds of stuff, which I got an email from her telling me all these things in red that should be business expenses so i don't know why she makes fun of me on social media or says that i put all these charges on my business card like where did i get that information from but anyways but i go on to tell him like i just want to do the right thing i don't want to be having any wrong numbers out anywhere if chase has the wrong numbers i want to make sure they have the right ones he's like no babe i promise he tells me in the video specifically the guy's name that he talked to and that he made sure he had the right numbers but i know that if we go through legend bank which is the people doing our uh doing our temporary financing while we're building they said the inter the in the interest rate would be a little bit higher but i know they know the right numbers for sure okay so he goes on and tells me like no 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 i promise that Chase has all the right numbers, prints out these P&Ls I got here that say the right numbers on them. And yeah, just wasn't the numbers he showed up to court with. Oops, I wasn't recording that, sorry. Um, Where did I start? Oh yeah, he thinks we're about to close at this point. So remember, when I first tell you, he thought we were going to close in October of the previous year like the bank i found the bank for like i found my loan application right here and it says you're approved you're ready to go february of 2020 we're now in march of 21 so in february or in october of 2020 right after she left and he thinks that we're about to close and that's going to be his first like out to go try to get divorced even though i have no idea um that's when he buys the car that's when he buys the massage chair he's spending money like crazy but then we make $185,000 in selling our Roanoke house and I go pay $180,000 on my line of credit and he is pissed and I cannot figure out why are you so mad that I just paid off the line of credit like we always do that when we come into like large sums of money or have big box days or whatever we always pay off all of our debt 
Well, because if he files for divorce now, I have money to find him back. So now he has to stick around. So he, so he has to wait till line of credit's racked back up, credit cards are maxed out again, and starts the process over. Also, I called the bank in December of 2020 because I'm like, what the fuck? What's going on? Why is my loan taking so long to close? They're like, ma'am, he has not sent us any documents since October. So I get involved. By March, we're ready to close again. But that's when I start realizing like something is seriously wrong. Like with the way he was acting last year, plus this whole like we're getting sued right now for a million dollars. He has no conversation about it, doesn't care. He just says she's disgusting and crazy and blah, blah, blah. And she's responsible for leaking all of our financial information online that nobody else knew because I wasn't telling y'all that I did not have permanent financing. Just like every single person in my question box when I asked y'all that, not a single person. And you know, because you're following me, if I was lying right now, no one said, yeah, you told us all about it. Nope. Everybody was like, I followed you for 10 years. Didn't know a thing about it. So we go to March of 21. And what happens? I file for divorce because I know he's lying to me and I can't figure out why. I've already told you all this before, but then I messaged the bank and everybody else. Permanent financing, Chase Bank, attorneys, my counselor, everybody even put the cops on the email and was like, I'm not signing shit. I'll show you a video from two days prior. No, the day before this video you just saw. That's when I kind of really started putting it together. I say really putting it together. Honestly, I had no idea until the actual divorce in 23, why this was happening. And the problem in my brain was, when you think someone's doing something bad to you, it's hard enough to accept they're doing it, but then to not know why and not have a valid reason why. So when we went through the divorce and those fake numbers ended up on that screen, then I figured it all out. But I had no idea it was as bad as it is. And yeah, so for the next eight months after I filed for divorce, he tried to convince me that he had made sure inventory was right and all of our numbers are perfect and our QuickBooks looks great and don't worry about a thing, babe. I got it all under control, blah, blah, blah. Except for that's not what happened. So 50% of the time, he'd be sleeping upstairs and not telling me why. 50% of the time, he'd be giving me a $5,000 ring in front of y'all on Instagram. So it looks like to you guys, he's this super nice husband. He's like, oh, look what I got her for her birthday. Look what I got her for all these things. And then we get off and all my friends are around me and my house around him this whole time now. And they're like, why is he acting like that? So like a month prior, we had snowpocalypse and I had 16 people, I think, staying in my house at the time. And they were like, why is he treating you like shit? And I'm like, I don't know. But every time he thought we were about to get divorced, a.k.a. September of 2020, when I wrote my friends and said, there's 88 grand in my safe. If something happens to me, he did it, blah, blah, blah. That was September, 2020. He thought we were getting divorced in October because he was acting real weird. Then again, he has to be nice till March. Then February, March rolls around. He thinks we're about to get divorced, unbeknownst to me, because we're about to close on the loan. And he's acting like a dick again. But now I've stopped the loan from get it closing totally. He's also telling me if you go buy a car, Chase is not going to close on our loan. If you go do this, blah, blah, blah. So I hadn't had my own vehicle. Only girl in the house who has a job. But I hadn't had my own vehicle since mm, August, I think, of the year prior. When he he's on, he's on my ski trip that I paid for on this phone call. That he told me that I couldn't go on because we didn't trust Bub to be at home with my dad alone. And he said Bub didn't have the money to get out of our house except for Bub had texted him the day before saying that he just cashed in $4,000 on Dogecoin. So Bub definitely had the money to leave and Ben knew he did. But Ben didn't want me to go because like Wubby said the whole time they were there, he was watching me on his computer and telling Wubby he was glad I wasn't there while telling me on the phone that... He was, he wishes I was there the whole time, which my kid was like, mom, why did I say that? And I'm like, I don't know. Cause I had no idea at this time. I like think I might be going crazy at this point. I, I have no idea what's to come. Okay. So then from March to November, he gets a job in June. The Mind you at divorce court, um, the judge gives me the debt after March of 21 because she, because he's, oh, her ruling for motion for facts and findings that I filed said that I unilaterally used the line of credit by myself after the separation date, but I had no idea that we were still like living as a separated couple because why did he give me a ring on Instagram? Why did he go on vacation with me? That the line of credit paid for. Why did any of this stuff? Why is my line of credit paying off his credit card that he put that ring on? Like what? Um, also my line of credit repeatedly paid off this credit card and then he left it maxed out through the entire divorce, even though I paid off my own personal credit card while we were in the course of our divorce. And then at the end of it, he still put his maxed out credit cards on his inventory and appraisal. And I didn't have one of those because my attorney forgot to print it off. So I used one that had numbers from a year earlier. 
And I think I worried this whole time about like the reason I didn't sit down and tell y'all all this stuff in order like this where it's way easier to understand is because I thought in some way that oh, look what I have in my hand actually um, that I thought in some way that he was going to be able to get out of this. But then I realized that there is no way to get out of this because it's all on paper. See. How does that tie everything together? Well. Since in our 23 divorce, we didn't file our 21 taxes because then the judge would definitely see that's two years of a loss and his numbers up there showing you 21 are a lie. Um, and then she would have to say that we're paying off our business debt, dissolving the business and let me start over with a new business, which is essentially what I'd asked for this whole entire time. Just please let me pay off Chase. We can decide who owes what at the end, but let me at least pay them off so that we're not like accumulating. I was accumulating, I think, at least $2,500 a month in uh, interest alone, not even counting the payment itself. So I was paying like $7,500 a month of payments on line of credit and credit card. And I was just like, let us take the money from the sale of our house that's sitting in his attorney's trust account, gaining interest and pay off our debt. So at least we can start from zero. But of course he's not gonna do that because then that doesn't leave me stranded. And that was his goal. That is a child. Like, what are we doing? Oh yeah. You know when she's drinking out of a little coffee cup she sells on her website that says turning formulas into felonies? She posts a picture of herself. I put it in my highlights and she said, so what have I done now? Overinflated her 2019 revenue? Well, you know, those P&Ls were not the correct ones. I'll tell you that. And he just happened to use those numbers in our divorce. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. She bought me a nameplate one time that said rocket scientist. So maybe you do have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. Either way, I did. I swear I'll shut up soon, but I was not on the internet for like three days, I have a lot to say. Also, on a lighter note, today is my best friend Chris's birthday. Number one, I love that you guys love her just as much as I do. Number two, um, we genuinely get a kick out of all the dumb shit that... They're like, oh my God, they probably hate each other. Like, there's nothing in the world she could do or I could do that would make each other hate each other because I love her and I value her so much. And I, sometimes we sit together and ask her, we have this conversation. I'm like, I wish other, it makes me so nervous. Y'all just saw my front door shit. Um, not y'all, but you know, but I guess it doesn't matter. Hold on, I gotta start this over. Oh, I just did it again. Anyways, what did I say? Oh, we like have conversations sometimes and I'll be like, I hope that other people have a friend like you have in me and I have in you because like it is just wonderful. But let me tell you a funny story because she cracks me up. Today's her birthday. So she calls me this morning. <laughs> no, she texts me first and she says, I have to go read the text exactly to see what it was, but something about a girl named Trina. And I'm like, who? the only person I know Trina is a rapper. So she's like something about what Trina's doing with their life or something. And I'm like, who's Trina? And as the course of the day goes on, hold on, let me just show you her messages. This girl. Y'all, this girl watched 15 episodes. <laughs> the wrong season. I'm like, who's Trina? Also, I'm so Team Leah. At first, I was like, I don't know if I was a fan of her. But then, like, I really do get her. Like, she's just very blunt. And I don't necessarily... I mean, of course, she probably wanted Andrea to go home. But I don't think she was, like, the driving force behind it. Also, I think her and Rob should just get back together because she loves him period and she said she gets to do her big one at the reunion i don't know what that means but the reason they filmed the reunion so far from like today like i think they do it a month later so they probably filmed last night's episode like two days ago and then they do the reunion august 19th and the reason is because they want these people to go out in the real world see if they're going to be together or not it'd be pointless to like interview them tomorrow for the reunion because of course they're all still together but like a month from now some shit could pop off you know anyways i don't know it's like a little soap opera and it takes me away from my own Oh, and to be clear, when I said I got involved, 
with the loan process in December means I lit a fire under Ben's ass to start answering their questions. And I made sure that they knew that if he's not answering you, I will tell him to respond to you. So I'm still not in charge of the finances, but I trust him. And honestly, I was like trying to convince myself that he wasn't lying and that I've got to be like overreacting to this or like thinking it wrong because you don't like sometimes he would say stuff like you just don't understand, babe, and that's OK. And so you really do think like he's saying it's OK that I don't understand, but that I don't understand. And I'd be like, yeah, maybe he's right. Maybe like I just don't get it. But looking back now that part just pisses me off so bad because like no I was figuring it out and you just kept telling me I wasn't because here we are